my experiences in Iraq were that uh, having to watch over 50 of my friends, their good friends, die. Having to kill people, uh, having to kill a child who tried to kill me. I was a Marine, we're, we're trained to kill, we're trained that death is okay. Uh, wasn't trained how to deal with the death, but we're definitely trained to, to kill. When I was a kid growing up, I uh, went to church and it's kind of a parent's drag you to church, but kind of like the thing you're supposed to do if you're a Christian, but all the while not really feeling like a Christian, I just felt like God was a, a very judgmental God and I never felt loved. And then uh, every time you, I basically prayed to God, it was before I ate food or every time that I did something extremely wrong and needed God to forgive me at that point and make things better. So before I uh, joined the military, I. Uh, was very lost in my life and just wasn't feeling 100% uh, loved. It wasn't feeling important. Uh, before I went in, I was pretty much like a hippie. I was uh, very laid back, but uh, the anger was there. It was just very hidden. And then uh, when I went to the, the Marine Corps, they really taught me how to, to centralize the anger. And I, after my training, it definitely amplified. So it got worse. The first time I came back from Iraq, I was extremely angry and very uh, lost in my ways. I was running red lights. I was taking my motorcycle 150 miles an hour down the expressway. I, I was scared out of my mind and I was angry all the time. It was a dark, lonely world. In September of 2004, I went back for my second tour in Iraq into a, a place called Ar Ramadi, Iraq. Every time we left uh, the wire, we went outside of our encampment, uh, we got shot at almost immediately. We were losing guys left and right. Uh, during my stay there, I got hit by over 70 IEDs easily. I lost over 50 friends uh, to combat injuries. Uh, we had to, basically we had to find a release and uh, we had the internet, so uh, my friends and I would go on the internet and send some pictures back home, so I used uh, MySpace at the time. Uh, on MySpace, I, I found a, a girl that I used to go to high school on there with, and uh, she was cute, so I sent her out a little thing like, hey, I'm a Marine, I'm in Iraq, how you doing? And she sent back like, okay, I'm good. So that didn't work, but, uh, but I'm a Marine, so I kept on trying. So every day we kept on writing each other, uh, emails back and forth, if not two or three of them a day. And then uh, February 3rd of 2005 happened. Uh, I was sitting inside of a hooch with uh, some other buddies of mine, and uh, I came, uh, in from smoking and one of my buddies was about to go outside to smoke and uh, he asked me if I want to come and for the first time I said no. He sat outside the hooch and I was inside the hooch and a motor round came down and dropped right behind him. It killed him instantly and then the rest of the shrapnel came and hit me and about six or seven other guys around us. I looked down at my knee and my pants are just soaked in blood and my leg is just open and I can see my kneecap. I look over and my arm is drooping off my body. I'm just holding by a couple of tendons, shrapnel ripped right through it. Uh, I look down at my chest and there's about a six inch piece of metal hanging out of my chest and I know I'm not supposed to touch that and I'm trying to keep away from it. Shrapnel is throughout my entire face and all I'm thinking is uh, I'm gonna die. Yeah, this, this stinks. I'm trying to scream out help but my mouth, the saliva is gone from the shock and I'm screaming out help. Help. I got shipped off to a, a couple of hospitals in, in Iraq, and from there I was uh, put into a, a C-130 and transferred to Germany. On the flight, they poured ice on me, and I found out that I had a 104 degree fever for over an hour, which uh, I legally should have been brain dead from, but God willing, I survived it. So after one of my surgeries in Germany, I was coming out of it and being a little bit groggy, and uh, there's this guy, and he's measuring my body, he's measuring my legs and he's measuring my arms and so I asked him what he's doing and he said that he was measuring me for a wheelchair and I'm like, oh I got one over there, I'm good and he goes, it's gonna be a wheelchair you're gonna use for the rest of your life and that was a, a devastating moment. Me being a Marine and being stubborn at the same point, I wasn't gonna take it. I told them, don't, don't give me a wheelchair, I want a cane, give me something that I can walk with. I uh, immediately started going through physical therapy with a bike, uh, physical therapy after physical therapy after physical therapy, just trying to get my leg to work again, trying to get my arm to do something again. Uh, I got eventually shipped back home to, to America and to my home base in California. 
Uh, all the while, throughout the entire time though, every day I was uh, sitting there and writing Jen, uh, just writing email after email to her on MySpace, and we just kept on writing back and forth every day and slowly building our relationship up. And then uh, after I got out of the military, uh, I started getting my muscle back in my arm and my kneecap, and I started walking again and using my arm, and I actually could actually start running again. Uh, I came back home to Wisconsin and uh, started spending more time with Jen, and uh, we, our love flourished. We, we became actually infatuated with each other. Uh, and then one day I asked her if she would be happy to uh, spend the rest of her life with me, and she said yes. So after Jen and I got married, we started coming to Elmbrook, and we started taking young couple classes. Through that, we actually got introduced to this one class in which uh, Kathy and Rob Adams were the, the two hosts. It was in that that uh, Ben really shared his heart with me and I developed an appreciation for the impact that war had had on his life, uh, for the impact that war had had on his marriage. Rob and I started a, a friendship off together in there and then he asked me if I wanted to, to start and join with him in a, a men's small group. So we started that off. And my faith in Jesus Christ really started to grow through my small group with the guys. Likewise, my faith with my wife was growing more and more. Uh, we started coming to the church every week, Saturday night, and I'd come in here and I'd sit, and I'd have to sit in the very back of the pews, though, right by the concrete pillars. Uh, with my, my combat and my background and hypervigilance, I'd always have to sit with my back to something. So those concrete pillars did a great job of making me feel protected and not really safe, but at least I, I knew what my surroundings were looking like when I was at church. At 2009's No Regrets, I came here uh, by myself. I didn't know anybody. I sat on the outside, met a guy. He uh, talked to me very friendly and invited me in to come with his friends. And they invited me into the very, almost like the, the central part of the, of the main sanctuary here. And I was just completely surrounded by men. And at that point in my life, I was so fearful of having people around me. But the moment I got there, there was so much love and so much joy in the room that all my fear had left me. I was, I, I felt loved, I felt protected, and I felt safe for the first time. And they asked if, uh, if anybody at the end would like to rededicate their lives to God. And at that point, I, I just sat there and I realized I had to rededicate my life to God. And it was one of those moments where you know that this is what we're meant to do. And there's no fear for any men in the place. And uh, for the first time in a long time, I just started crying because I, I actually felt the love of God again in my life. And it was a moment where it, it was just feeling loved. I don't know how better say that. What anyone will see uh, when they meet Ben is he's a delightful young man. And uh, he's had some challenges in his life, many of which came from being at war. He gave me a deep appreciation for the sacrifice that he and a lot of other young men have made to defend our country. Uh, but through that same process, uh, I had the privilege of uh, sharing with Ben that God had uh, had those experiences in his life for just such a time as this. And as we talked through uh, what that looked like, what that meant, um, I've watched God uh, place a calling on his heart to serve other men who've had a similar experience and to love them through the healing process that only God can facilitate. I felt like I was having a tug in my heart from God that I needed to move on, I needed to start up a new group. So from that I was thinking what better way than to reach out to veterans that have come back from combat. A lot of them are in a deep dark world of pain and the only people that really can relate to a combat veteran is another combat veteran. I've been there, I've done it. I've been to the same places as them. I've been into the dark places, and I want to help bring them to the light. So it really comes down to that it's, it's all about relationships. It's all about how these guys, they need somebody to be a, center, a cornerstone for them. They need somebody to, to show them love. I, I try to bring God into their situation. I, I try to, to show them that God is there, God loves you, and God will take care of you. You don't need the drugs or alcohol to get rid of that pain. You don't need the girls or the fast cars. You need God. He's the, he's the cornerstone of your life. He is going to make everything better.